When it comes to sports cars, there are some people who want a convertible to make sure that you can enjoy the sun and fresh air while you're driving. But other people want a fixed roof so you get a little more protection from the elements. Perhaps then the best compromise of all is a power retractable hardtop, like this one. This is the RF version of the Mazda MX-5 Miata. It stands for retractable fastback, and that means you get this wonderful powered roof that can be raised or lowered with just the touch of a button in 13 seconds. But how does that change all the other things that we love about Mazda sports car? How does it look? With the roof up, those big buttresses will attract attention anywhere. With it down, the car still looks extremely lithe and sporty. From every angle, there are just enough classic Miata design cues while still bringing the Roadster's design firmly into the 21st century. This particular car also has extra gloss black accents, including a trunk spoiler and side skirts, as part of the club trim level, which look great against the ceramic metallic paint. How's the storage? As you might be able to guess from how small this car is on the outside, trunk space is at a premium. There's just four and a half cubic feet back here. Now pack carefully and you'll be able to fit a week's worth of groceries or maybe a carry-on suitcase and a backpack, but certainly it's pretty cramped in the trunk. Things aren't much better inside, where this compartment between the seats is essentially your only storage location. There's no glove box and the center console compartment is only really large enough to fit the key, although there is a little hidden compartment behind the passenger seat. The cup holders, in typical Miata fashion, are serviceable, but not great. Fortunately, there's a small slot up front that just about fits my cell phone. Is it roomy? Someone my size will fit in here fine, but this is far from the roomiest sports car around. There's no up-down adjustment for the driver's seat because it automatically rises and falls when you move it closer or further away from the steering wheel, which does save weight, but might annoy non-average sized drivers. The steering wheel doesn't telescope, but it does tilt. How does the interior feel? Although the Miata still has a very back-to-basics interior, Mazda had just done a really nice job of dressing up the things that I might touch. For instance, I really like all the red stitching on all the leather pieces on things like the dashboard and the door panels. I also find that these cloth seats are really comfortable too. Is it well equipped? This is the club trim level, so it gets more performance parts than the RF Grand Touring. There's a limited slip differential, upgraded suspension, and a strut tower brace. This one also has the $3,400 Brembo package that includes, unsurprisingly, upgraded Brembo brakes, as well as lighter BBS 17-inch wheels. Convenience features include keyless entry, push-button start, a Bose sound system, blind spot monitoring, and a color trip computer. But that's about it. If you're looking for fancy stuff like pre-collision braking, cooled seats, remote start, or even a backup camera, well, you're looking at the wrong type of car. How's the infotainment system? The Mazda Connect infotainment system is very easy to use. There are no real gee whiz extra features, but the built-in music, Bluetooth, and navigation functions all work very well via the rotary controller on the center console. There's no support for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay yet, but Mazda says it's going to offer those as a software upgrade later. Is it a good daily driver? So what really matters in using the Miata RF as a daily driver is, is it quieter and more civilized than the soft top car? And the answer is an immediate yes. With this roof, which has more insulation and more padding between me and the outside world, there's a lot less road noise. It's really noticeable how much quieter it is. But this is a convertible, and a lot of the time you're gonna be driving with the roof down. So let's push that button for 13 seconds and lower the roof. Now, you can lower the power roof when you're traveling it up to six miles an hour, but six miles an hour is pretty close to being stopped. So most of the time, I think you're gonna to have to pull over and do it. But it's useful though, if say you're still creeping through traffic or driving through a parking lot. You know, with the roof down, the Miata RF is still just a wonderful, wonderful car to drive around in everyday driving. 
but I do notice, especially if I have the windows down at higher speeds, there's a lot of really loud wind buffeting. I think compared to the soft top car, it's almost as if the wind gets caught behind my head in these buttresses, and that just makes this car really, really loud, unless you have the windows rolled up when you're driving with the top down. The other thing I would say is that visibility really isn't great with the roof down. In the standard car, as soon as you lower the roof, you've got zero blind spots. You can see around and behind you easily. In this one, that's not the case. Even though the roof is lowered and I have big open expanse of air above my head, when I look over my shoulder, I see those giant buttresses. Now, this car does have blind spot monitoring, so it's not necessarily a safety issue, but there have been a couple of times when I've been reversing out of parking spaces and just wishing that I had a little more visibility over my shoulders. Is it fun to drive? I feel like if you're the sort of person who's going to watch this far in a video reviewing the Miata, you already know the answer. But that answer is yes. It's super fun to drive. Now, the RF has very few mechanical changes from the standard Miata, and that's a good thing. Why mess with perfection? So I've got a 2-liter inline-four engine up front, 155 horsepower, 148 pound-feet of torque, 6-speed manual gearbox, rear-wheel drive. There is an automatic transmission available, but I would really, really encourage you to buy the manual one. It's just so much more fun. What I really love about this gearbox is that it's light enough that you can use it in traffic without any issue, but it's got this great direct mechanical feel to it. You can know exactly when you're in and out of the gate, where exactly you are really, really short throws, and then couple that with the rev happy engine and the great pedal placement, and you can just heel and toe downshift all day long, and you can just be having so much fun driving a manual transmission. Now, in terms of lightness, yes, the RF is a little bit heavier than the soft top, about 113 pounds. But when you think about that, that's less weight than if you just had somebody in the passenger seat. And honestly, from behind the wheel, I don't really notice the difference. This car basically drives and handles and performs just the way the regular one does. So I'm driving the Miata RF Club, that means I got slightly more aggressive suspension and brakes, and it all works really, really well. There's lots of grip, there's a lot of control from the body, I really like the brake pedal feel with these optional Brembos, but what it does is it engages you in the experience so well. You can feel exactly what the car's doing, there's a lot of feedback through the steering, even though there's quite strong assist so the steering is light, you can tell exactly what the front wheels are doing. And so in any driving situation, you really feel like you're part of the car and part of making it drive quickly and spiritedly. All of which is a very, very, very long-winded way of saying, yes, this car is crazy huge fun. And I think that even if you're not someone who likes driving manual transmission cars or not someone who is interested in sporty car driving, it only takes a couple of miles at the wheel of a car like the Miata to really get excited and to really understand why driving in the right car can be fun. How's the fuel economy? The Miata is rated for 26 miles per gallon city and 33 highway on premium fuel. Those numbers are pretty realistic. I've been driving spiritedly and I'm still seeing around 30 mpg on the trip computer. How much is it? The Miata RF is about $2,500 to $2,700 more than equivalent soft top models. This manual transmission RF club starts just over $31,000 and the Grand Touring is nearly $33,000. My test car costs $35,790, which is not expensive in the grand scheme of sports cars, but certainly starts to feel like a lot for a Miata. What are the negatives? Part of the Miata's appeal has always been that it's very lightweight and very affordable. But this RF version is more expensive and heavier than the regular soft top car. So for an enthusiast driver, that's going to be a big downside. Who should buy it? If you like the look and functionality of the RF more than the standard Miata, then there's no reason not to buy it. It's still one of the best sports car values around. Now, personally, I might still pick the soft top model to save both dollars and pounds, but I'm definitely really, really tempted by the great design of the RF. So I guess the answer is that anyone who loves driving convertibles should buy it. If you like this why buy scroll down and hit the like button, and leave us a comment if you've got any questions about this car. You can also go back into the archives and look at our why buy of a soft top Miata from April 2016. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get a new why buy like this every single Thursday, as well as a ton of other great video content. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at motorone.com.